I thought I left a full button for you. <laughs> like that hit oh, for me. Looks like your computer died. What? Never mind. When two Division I athletes discuss the challenges and successes of navigating life after competing, you get conversations designed by athletes for athletes. I'm Don Sutton. And I'm Brooke Beerhaus, sharing with the athletic community stories and insights to better understand life when your sport ends. Hello, knowledge seekers, athletes, and curious humans. I'm Brooke Beerhouse, alongside my insightful co-host, Don Sutton, on this week's episode of When Your Sport Ends. Here on the Believe Podcast Network, the number one podcast network for professionals. Do you believe? I'm kind of just now realizing that if I'm not open to racing a, like a, a race, Mm -hmm. I almost wonder if I have found closure. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I mean, really, I, I feel like it doesn't bother. It's not something that nags on me every day because when I initially quit, I definitely had that feeling nagging on me every single day. Like, why can't you just stick it out? Maybe you'll want to compete again. Like, maybe it'll come back or like, you know, that, that feeling and that passion and just sort of felt like a failure for giving up, you know? And that was really, I have found closure in that because what came, I don't see it as a failure. I don't see it as giving up on the sport. I see it as being strong enough to have changed the narrative on like, and to listen to myself and change what needed to be changed in my life in order to now succeed in what I would like to think is my purpose in life is, is being able to be a visual storyteller and documentary filmmaker and the people that I've met and the work that I've done, I feel like is leading me in the route that I needed to go. And I, had I been still focusing on winning a race or training, it just wasn't what I was meant to do. And I think I have found closure in the sense that I was strong enough to walk away from it and now I'm doing what I want and should be doing. Wow. That's pretty deep. So, give us a little bit of background what your sport is, where'd you come from, how'd you get to it, and we can go from there. Yeah, I ran cross country and track at the University of Iowa for two and a half years. I um, ended up quitting my junior year, so that junior year is my transition time. So whenever we're talking about the transition, that was whenever I was a junior at, in college. And, um, but before that I was a, I've been a lifelong runner and I started running when I was five, ran my first 5k when I was five. And I've just been an athlete for the, you know, entirety of my life. And I think the transition was the hardest part. So I'm excited to talk about it. I think there needs to be more of a dialogue around it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So first 5K when you were five to college to yep. coffee around the world. Mm -hmm. How does one get through all that? With a lot of coffee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, well, no, I mean, I had my first cup of coffee when I was 15. Mm -hmm. So before that, it was just a lot of energy. You think that helped you on those long distance runs? I do. I actually started running. My mom had me start running in order to get rid of all the excess energy that I had so I could focus at school and actually be able to do things without just, you know, having all of that energy. And um, that started my love of running because I was able to calm down and find clarity whenever I run. Yeah? Yeah, from yeah. a really early age. So I think then I you like still it. run right now? Yes. Get that clarity? Mm -hmm. I run pretty much every day. It's fascinating because that statistic, or just fun knowledge, 6.4% of people who start the uh, feature film actually finish it. Yeah. And actually get it distributed. 
six which point four, which that's pretty low. Low statistic, uh, yeah. No, Surprising. what? How, how did you? How did you manage to finish that so quickly? You think you're just in the zone? Yeah. Athletics. Yeah. I think it honestly goes back to that that state of mind. I mean, really being able to buckle down and do it. Um, running definitely prepared me for filmmaking in the sense that you have to be ready for anything in a race. With being a runner, you just get, and a swimmer too, I mean, you know you've got to pace yourself in certain areas or um, you have to be ready for running your own race, but also being able to change when you need to and adapt to other people's races as well. So, granted, I don't feel like I'm competing against other filmmakers because I truly, I, I just don't feel competition in my work. Mm -hmm. um, 